Welcome to Divorce Diary Show podcast. I'm the creator of Divorce Diaries, Michelle Trena. Thanks for joining. Um, I've been recording on Sundays for the last couple of episodes, and it's been working for me to be consistent. Um, so welcome to Sunday night, because in the Divorce Diaries world, I am in the weeds. I am still getting acne at 40, almost 41, and it's driving me mad. I am also taking care of my mom. I really wouldn't say taking care of. I've, I've been going there because my mom is very self-sufficient and she has spinal stenosis surgery and I've been going there alternating with my aunt to stay over because she's in a neck brace and she's, she's amazing, but she's also driving me mad. And I did, um, I literally, I also think I'm PMSing. So I had one of those moments yesterday where I had such a meltdown. I had to leave and walk around the neighborhood to calm down. So I did, um, I had did, uh, I, I did a voice memo of a of an episode and just running my material for upcoming shows to just get out of the negative headspace in my brain. Italian families tend to like hold grudges over stupid things, be neurotic and OCD over things that they can't control and clean and organize things that don't need cleaning and organizing, which is odd because I'm Italian and I have laundry over here that's been sitting for a week and I've not done it. I mean, I've done it, I just haven't folded it. So with that said, um, that's what's been going on, trying to juggle parenthood, my daughter's screen time, like she's loving loving this game Roblox and she's doing well in school. Her back to school night, they're like, oh, she's doing great. And then as a parent with a child, especially with a child with special needs, you think when is the other sh fucking shoe, foot, sock gonna drop? And in this case, I have two different socks. Um, okay, so anyway, she's doing well. And right now we are getting ready for bed slash trying to stick to the to-do list of what we need to do to get in bed in time so that I get up at 5 a.m and start all over again. Okay, comedy shows that are coming up. This week I will be at Catch a Rising Star in Princeton um, doing Divorce Diaries. It's one night, Friday night. I got divorced in this county, in Mercer County. My divorce attorney who I used for my divorce is in Princeton. He actually, he doesn't, I don't think he doesn't live in Princeton, but his offices are in Princeton. So I, every time I invite him to the show, he's always like, I'll see if I'm in town. How much do you go out of town? According to the bill that I paid, probably often. Um, but damn, like seven years later, you're getting probably a better, bigger check. Anyway, so I'm nervous as usual of tickets, but I'm excited. Um, I also have a birthday show coming up October 21st in Nutley, um, where all the nuts are, and I'm the head of them. Yeah. And then I have shows in California, which I'm really excited about, San Diego and LA. You know, it's been such a long time and I've gotten over the producer guy who I was like so hurt by last year. And I wasn't dating him, we were friends, we had a romance that went sour um, that I literally wanted for so long to have closure and multiple closures with. Um, and I really just wanted an apology and I wanted him to still like me. Um, which is stupid. I don't like him. I have a lot of uh, disgust towards him. And I went down the spiral yesterday and I looked on social media, by the way, um, which was stupid. I should not have done that. Every time I have a beer or a glass of wine, I fucking do that. I know that sounds bad, but it's, it's like the rabbit hole of spiraling. Um, still do not see any signs of him in a relationship. I know, I know. People cannot post with their significant others on social media, but I think the motherfucker lied just to get me off of his back, which makes me even more sad and depressed. Um, either way, it whole, the whole thing made me sad and depressed. Okay, so with this said, um, I had a really good, even though my show was really small last week, I had, a, I'm glad, like it all, it felt good. Um, and I want, I want my shows to keep feeling good. I am nervous because I'm, I'm very limited with the times I can go into the city and get on an open mic or get on a show um, because of my role as a mom, uh, a single mom. And I have, I do know other comics that are divorced and are single parents that alternate time and they make it work. And I can't seem to make it work. I can't seem to find the time. I, I can't go into the city at the drop of a hat. And I, it's not me not trying to make it work. It's just my given circumstances. 
I don't have an on-call babysitter that's not going to charge me any money to sit with my daughter or take her to gymnastics while I'm running into an open mic or a spot in the city. So I have to just practice at my in my room um, on social media and get up early and write. That's what I'm doing. That's my pathway. And sometimes I feel like it's not enough. Um, and then I create content too. And and then I get mad at myself. Like, why are you thinking it's not enough? Like, this is this is enough for now. This is enough for what you can do. You don't want to leave your child with strangers or with people and not be there for her moments and her day. And you don't have the money to like just hire someone that could be there while you go flooding around New York City, begging for spots. Um, so I'm just taking the path that's my own right now. Um, and I, I have to say, I, I tend to compare myself to other females that I see who are in the stand-up scene and just in general, other comics that are really famous that, that are, 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 are struggling to get their own Netflix special, struggling to get their own series. And here I am with my amazing show, my amazing series, and my amazing writing team that I feel like, girl, you got a long way to go. And... I'm getting mad at myself for doing that. Like, just shut up, Michelle, enjoy the process. You know, just because you're not um, at 300,000 followers on your YouTube or your, your social media doesn't mean that you can't make stuff happen in your own way. Um, I love how I'm self-talking to myself as I look at myself through the Zoom lens, uh, but it's hard, it's hard. It's a self-doubt, self-worthy issue. Um, and I struggle with it on a daily basis. Somebody asked me this this week and they're like, what made you smile today? And I was like, Haha, that's corny. And then I was like, ah, that's actually actually a really not corny, but a very good thing to practice. And I don't mean it, that it was corny in a bad way. I just was like, for a second, okay, I guess I did. I thought it was corny, but then I, I was like, well, you're the biggest cornball. So fuck you, Michelle, for even saying that. And how, how do you look when you, when you say what made you smile today, that's just like when I say every morning, what am I grateful for? And, and people have called me like silly for doing the manifestation thing. I, I, I want to do more of it because I do think it helps and it works. I do. I think it works. And I like, I was very glad that that person watched when he listens to that. He's gonna be like, what the fuck, bitch? No, I'm glad that they asked me that because what made me smile today? Okay. What made me smile today? Connecting with some of my family members at Awake that like, I felt like they opened up to me about stuff in their own personal life. What made me smile today is coming home coming home, coming to my apartment and seeing some of my daughter's happiness, you know, but those little things make you smile. I mean, what I, it's like, I really had to think cause today I was getting stressed out a lot, but I have to like look at the accomplishments and not look at things like the comparisons. I think social media tends to do that, but I also love social media. Dating, um, totally not, nothing with that is changing. You know, the one guy that I talked about when I went, the friend that I went on a date with a couple months ago, like, yeah, he looked at my LinkedIn profile. I thought that means anything. Um, I don't like him anymore. Like I fucking actually don't even want to be his friend. I actually want to untag him from one of the posts of our pilot because he was in the pilot because I am just actually quite very much frustrated with him. And he, cause he didn't even like the post. You know what? Let's do that right now. Let's untag that motherfucker. Cause you know what? He's a jerk. Okay. Wait, I'm listening to this guy's, uh, podcast. He honest Papa's. I was just following him. He's really funny. Just go cursing. One of my favorite comics is really funny. And I was listening to their video, um, about being comics and how funny they are. And, you know, she was complimenting him on how funny he is and how smart he is and how not a lot of comics have all those qualities. And I was starting to get depressed because I want to have all those qualities. I want to be like that guy and like her. Jessica is so freaking funny and so smart. And I'm getting up here every day and writing. But then I said to myself, you know what, maybe you're not doing enough. Um, like it's 830 almost on right now. And I need to get the fuck up at five o'clock at 445 to make my coffee, to be sitting in my bed. By the way, I feel like my bed is not as comfortable as it should be for when I write and write till six o'clock and then go to the next project I have to write for. Like I'm writing a pilot for a group of women that I'm really excited to work for. And that's another thing. Be grateful for your fucking getting opportunities, Michelle. Um, anyway, so talking myself down the spiral. 
talking myself out of spiraling, talking myself out of making thought, talking myself out of the bad thought processes that don't serve me. And I know last a couple of episodes ago, we had Nolan Rauscher on, and we were talking about, um, you know, the divorce rabbi. And ha- by the way, happy Rosh Hashanah to all of my Jewish friends, family, colleagues out there. Happy New Year, spreading love and good health. And I love that. Um, yes, have a great New Year. Um, I so Noam had said to me, how much space is this guy taking up in your brain? When we talked to the producer, he's like, he took up, he's living rent free in your brain. So I, you know, that concept can live with, with, with bad thoughts too. Like I'm comparing myself, like you're allowing this thought to just take up space and energy, whereas you can be putting it and applying it into something else. Um, all right. So with that said, I wanted to share with you guys a few, um, a, a few jokes. Why not? Saturday night, divorced in my 40s. I feel like I did when I was babysitting. My mom is going through her bathroom schedule. <laughs> Except, uh, no, okay, so here was the joke. I fucked that up when I wrote it out. Saturday night, being divorced and in my 40s. I feel like I did when I was 14 and babysitting, going through the child's bathroom schedule. But this time I'm going through my mom's bathroom schedule because she's recovering from surgery. So she goes through her shit stuff. Oh, did I take my cola, cola lace? Did I take my Miralax? I was like, and my mom makes noises when she goes to the bathroom. Uh, and I said to her once, and she got really offended being very traditional Italian Catholic woman. She goes, I was like, mom, your, your, your bathroom noises sound sensual and weird. She's like, oh my God, Michelle, how dare you? I'm in pain. I was like, well, so am I in hearing that. Nobody wants to hear their mother taking a poop in the bathroom and go, ah, what the fuck is that? I'm an Italian Jersey girl. There's a lot of us out there doing comedy and I feel like I'm the last one who's picked in dodgeball. That's how I've been feeling lately. That's not a joke, that's just how I'm feeling. I'm so divorced and single that I'm being offered a tax break. I, again, I don't know if that's funny. I've been divorced for so long that I have an AARP card in the divorce community. I'm a, I'm a person that doesn't see or hear, no. Uh, you can't be a comedian and a single mom without an extra tablet in the car to occupy your child while you do sets. No, you can't be happy in divorce unless you saw who I was married to. You can't have too much screen time. If I don't have enough, I don't know that I don't. I, never mind. Erase that. That was a fuck up. Okay. Um. Yeah, I spent sixty dollars on a virtual reality Robux for my daughter when you don't have it in your budget because you promised her. I, I pressed sixty by accident as opposed to forty. Or it's all right. Forty feels like twenty. Um. Here is it. Okay. Forty. Where is it? Oh, I just had it. Uh. When your mom is surging, you're in your complete baby, but helping her out. When I feel like it's my period coming, I feel like a Loch Ness monster. Irrational, I write, and I, I write, I write. Nothing makes me happy, and my acne pops out of nowhere. Single mom, which means by being in the weeds, means I'm on track. Um, I am a single mom, so when it looks like I'm awake, I'm asleep. I'm such a single mom that even when I'm awake, I'm asleep. Maybe it's that. I don't know. Okay. I live in a town where you go to the feast, you know, you go to the town feast. You want to go to the feast? Overpriced cannolis and zeppelis and sausage and pepper that sticks in your gut for five years. Um, I don't want to go to feasts. I have a feast at home. It's called Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Uh, Less screen time. My daughter is addicted to Roblox. Like I said, I am addicted to TikTok and YouTube shorts, as long as we're building our brands. Less screen time. Such hypocrisy because everything you do have, we have to do for work is on the, is on the screen, right? Um, I feel like such, okay, one more joke. 40s, okay, here it is. 40 feels like 20, except when you wake up. Uh, it sucks because I don't want to feel that. There's no joke there. Perfect mom breakfast. Perfect mom cuts her, f- perfect mom breakfast. She cuts her things into shapes. I just cut them. I actually, I just ripped them because all my knives are dirty and I don't feel like reaching into the flooded sink to get poked by the knife. Perfect mom does a bento box. I do foil and sometimes wax paper if I run out. The worst is when you wake up and you go to open your drawer and you see nothing. There's nothing and you're, you're fucked. And you have to go to the corner store and you don't have money for the corner store and the corner store does not accept ATM cards and their ATM machine is broken. Oh my God, how bad of a parent you'd be if you just put in the lunch a whole box of corn pops. I would actually think that's considerate, okay, because she could share with her friends. 
nah, one of those parents will complain because their kid is allergic to nuts, soy, gluten, or anything that tastes good, and you get your kid banned from the cafeteria. Okay, school lunch. Put it on my tab. I do. Do you ever you ever avoid paying the school lunch? And, and then the school keeps messaging you. You have a bill. Shut the fuck up. It's public school send it to the mayor. I'm joking. Thank you so much for tuning in to some of my new bits and some of my new rants about life as a single mom divorcee, feeling like I'm on the outskirts, but I also feel like there's a lot of us on the outskirts. And if you are on the outskirts and you want to come to one of my shows, please email me divorce diary show at gmail.com. Go to divorce diary show.com, uh, Michelle and click on the link events, go to the little hamburger and you click on events and you can you can go and see some uh, of my show and divorcedarishow.com. You go right into the tickets and you can come see me this Friday, Catch a Rising Star, September 30th, Catch a Rising Star, October 21st in Nutley, uh, November 5th at the Crow Comedy Club in Santa Monica and November 6th at the Mike Drop Comedy Club in San Diego. And there are other stand-up shows that I'm a part of um, also. So when you, if, you don't, if you don't have a time to go see a Divorce Diary show, although make a time, make the time. Um, and you want to just come see, uh, catch me doing stand-up or a film festival or um, I don't know, I might be, might be booked in a, a musical. I auditioned for a Christmas Carol McCarter Theater, but I haven't heard back. Uh, you can go to michelletrainer.com as well. Thank you guys and keep living your happily ever divorced after or happily divorced ever after. I don't know. You decide. Love you guys. Stay tuned for more.